And it's Sean Garlick, who has led this side so superbly in 1996, who was first out onto the ground. This Roosters side, they haven't had too many problems with injury. They've basically kept their squad intact from round one of the Optus Cup. And as seven out of seven suggests, they're in very, very good form as a team and as individuals as well, a number in line for selection at higher honours. That is their lineup for today with Garlic the captain. Such a strong pack of forwards. Lowry, Hermanson and Kiwis taking on the Warriors today. Of course, their coaches, Phil Gould. Peter Clark, their leading try scorer. As he was last year with the Roosters, he's been in fine form in the centres, making the most, really relishing his chances. Created by the inside men, two of them there. Andrew Walker, Brad Fittler, plenty to say before the match. And now the Auckland Warriors, Greg Alexander, back to the ground where he had his greatest moment in rugby league. That was a premiership victory back in 91 with the Panthers and some support for the Warriors here today as well. And the Auckland Warriors line up for today. They have had to make a change with Phil Blake out of the lineup, their hooker. And that's caused a reshuffle in the forward pack. Mark Horro will pack into the scrum in the front row. And Mark Carter, a former All Black, comes into the side, making his run on debut for the Auckland Warriors. John Money, of course, the coach. Sideline duties today is with Stephen Roach and with him a special guest. Yeah, Phil Blake with me down on the sideline. Bit unfortunate, Phil. We've got an injury. What's the problem? Yeah, he got a sciatic nerve problem blocker. Uh, hasn't responded to treatment. And, and this morning we had some more physio and a bit more running, but it, I couldn't get out of a trot, so we decided against it. What about this? A big test for the Warriors to see if they are pretenders or if they, if they can match it with the big boys? Yeah, certainly, blocker. It's probably our biggest game to date. And uh, look for a very impressive uh, first half. I think that's where it's, you know, we're going to have to hang on early and uh, make sure that we play uh, pretty solid football and our forwards are going to have to lead the way. Well, sorry it was so short, mate. Good on you. Thanks. That's fine, Bob. Stephen Roach and Phil Blake on the sideline. Paul McBlain in charge of this match, the man who refereed last Friday week's City Country match, and Andrew Walker gets us underway. And in the headgear is Gene Namu. And back they come with Stephen Kearney. Second rower for the Warriors and back to the 10, so it was a good kickoff. Good start to the match from the Roosters. And now Andy Platt with a second hitter. Three defenders were there to meet him. Out of dummy half at Stacey James, we're told that he will have the dummy half duties today. And this is Dennis Betts. And 25 metres out from their own line. First set of six in the match and a second hit up for Platt. And lifted and driven in the tackle by Tony Iroh. Before the last tackle for inside the 10, a little keen the chase from the Roosters' defensive line. The Roosters all season have tried to put pressure on their opponents. General play kicker that time, not back the required distance before racing through. A good start for the Warriors here. Two sets of six in a row. This is Gavin Hill taking it 33 metres out. All the players to the left for the Warriors. So the Warriors 35 out from the Roosters line and feeding it across through Kirk. Held and tackled by Walker and also Fittler. Out of dummy half goes Horro. 34 years of age now, one of the real veterans in the Optus Cup, Mark Horro. Had a few clubs as well and injured after that tackle as Namu almost threw over the off road for a party. He gets inside the 20. Adrian Lamb as a last line of defence cut him down. Alexander, a cutout ball, finds no one, bounces past Betts. Fielded now, standing wide was that man Carter in 14. And trapped on the 20, last tackle for the Warriors. This is Jones with a kick through. Juni has it covered. And Juni, as he's done all season, in fact, all the men at the back for the Roosters have covered up so well. As he did well to get the ball on the full there, Darren Juni, and already a problem for the Warriors. As Andrew pointed out, Mark Horro in some trouble. As the little kick went over the top, Horro already off the field. Tony Tutupu into the action early. The Roosters work it out from their own 20. Iroh taken high there by Alexander. He was going to rule for inside the 10 in any case. Paul McBlain. It was an awkward looking attempt to tackle from Greg Alexander. Came in over the top. But of course the penalty was for inside the 10. Tony Tatupu on in 16. And for Mark Horro. 
And the Roosters run the ball up with Hermanson, and they weren't back to 10 that time either. So double penalty, quick tap, comes with Lowry. Strong drive for the Roosters. And could have been another penalty. All the men lined on the left. Garlic, they come back to the blind side with Lamb. He dummied and then almost ran into the back of Matsy. Just three metres out from the line. Early pressure for the Warriors as now Garlic turns it inside. And the Roosters with a power play. Straight through the centre, Hermanson scores. And on the back of those two penalties, the Roosters have come up with their first try. Only a matter of, what, two and a half minutes. They've only had the ball for about four or five tackles. And this is very poor defence on your own line. Look at them, three of them drifted across with the dummy half. And that just opened it up for Big Tezza to stroll over for an easy try. Sean Garlic, great work by him. And Tia Rapati, the number four, he did not even bother to move up. If he'd have gone up and across, then there wouldn't have been a hole opened. Just really lazy play. And the one area that you've got to be intense is on your own line. And you can't come, you know, like sprinting off like they did then and, and chasing the marker. You've just got to keep your line intact and uh, wait till you see what the opposition is going to do in that area. A bit different when you're on the halfway line. You've got some room to work with, but not there. And plenty being said in the Warriors in goal at the moment. And in the meantime, it's clear you'll have this kick from 13 metres in from touch on the western side of the Sydney Football Stadium. And look at that for the season, 78 points. Half a dozen behind North sharp shooter Jason Taylor. And Ivan Cleary won the game ball last week in the match in quagmire conditions against the Chargers. First kick of the day. He struck that one straight into the upright. We'll take a break from the stadium. The Roosters, they lead the Warriors 4-0. back five minute mark Warriors with a deep kickoff for Walker and Lowry's put that down so a turnover from the kickoff the Roosters making the error and Auckland unable to take an advantage but they will have the scrum feed that's a poor mistake something you, as a coach you can't coach against Phil Gould he'd just be shaking his head at this one but Lowry took his eyes off the football looking where he was going to run so this is a great uh, chance now for the Warriors with Alexander to feed some sort of start if they can strike straight back as Kerwin comes in off the wing a try double against the Eels last Sunday and the Warriors with Jones and now Namu up in the line a dummy turns inside for a party they open up the party offloads to Hoppy and they have struck back so quickly the Auckland Warriors for all that's a funny old game isn't it Tara party very good attacking player bit dusty in defence at the other end. Jun Namu coming up from fullback. He really is the key player for the Warriors. The inside run, the big fend. Winger forced to make a tackle and that allowed Sean Hoppy a simple run to the line. On this occasion, the Roosters defence a little bit lazy on the inside. Tony Ira, the number 12, he hung off, he hung off. The gap opened up, he hadn't come across and that's uh, how Rapati got through. And the Hoppy won't score an easier one. So uh, on the back of that mistake by Jason Lowry, the Warriors draw even with the Roosters. And Sean Hoppy only a couple of tries this year, but in his time with the Raiders and then the Bears and now the Warriors, he has become, well, a professional try scorer. One of the best finishers in the game. And earlier this year, Sterlow, he had that honour of leading New Zealand at the World Nines tournament in Fiji. Yes, and that's an honour in itself, isn't it, to have a winger, even that's football leading the side and he, he's not just a professional try scorer he's a professional player the clean-up work his coolness under pressure he really is a fine player Gavin Hill has the kick straight into the Sun Where that we have a front rower as the number one kicker first choice today from 20 out eight in from touch Gavin Hill with a kick not a bad attempt in fact it's spot on so the Warriors have found themselves in front 6-4 Worth looking at again this work of Rapati. 
Jorgensen could do little than take the man with the ball and Hoppy that left him unmarked to come up with a very good four pointer So eight minutes gone and two tries. Steve Roach on the sideline. What's the news on Mark Horro? Yeah, Mark Horro concussion. He got back slammed and hit his head on the ground. And they're in all sorts of trouble, the Auckland Warriors. That's a good come, uh, hit back considering Stacey Jones is playing in the dummy half roll. Tony Tartupu it was from the kickoff. Got back to the 10 again for the Warriors. And now Mark Carter. In his first year with the club, first year in rugby league. Jones now with Betts. Angled his run and Dickler was able to chop him down outside the 20. Hill now straight. Rickardson was first man in for the Roosters. It's Jones now. Very flat pass out of dummy half and Platt was taken around the chest by Walker. And Rickardson was there also. They've used up five tackles, the Warriors. Alexander away for Namu to get the kick in. Straight down the centre of the field. And this is Ivan Cleary from the back looking to link up with Jorgensen. He does that right now. And Jorgensen with a fend away from Blackmore. Not able to advance his position any great distance, though. And now Peter Clark. He'll scurry down that blind side back to the 30. 6 4, the Warriors leading the Roosters as Cleary goes for yet another blind side run. At seven or eight metres. And Garlic. I read this morning where he was talking about breaking his own club tackling record which he set against Western Suburbs in a Saturday match just a few weekends ago he topped the 50 mark by the Eastern Suburbs count as Fittler gets the kick in it's a good one from Brad Fittler and Namu he has to wend his way back from inside the 10 and doesn't get far good tackle Matt Singh who could well be placing or playing for an origin jumper here today well, I can tell you that the uh, chief selector from the Queensland Origin team, Les Gies, is here today watching both Adrian Lamb and Matt Singh, and he'll be heading to uh, the Parramatta Stadium tonight to watch Parramatta play up against the Crushers. It's the Warriors centre field, 35 out from their own line. Now with Kearney. He spun into the tackle and was forced down by Tony Iro. They've reached the last yet again, and Namu placing this kick, but on the bounce... It comes favourably for Cleary, and then a front-on tackle from Alexander was textbook stuff. Now Jorgensen, a step away from Namu. Eight, ten metres. Now Lamb spreads it for Rickardson to take on the defence. Just looking back to the score between these two teams last year, the first time they met. There's a win to Auckland. Let's stay with the action as Walker cuts through the centre. Beautiful tackle, Alexander in cover. And now Cleary away for Lamb as they step it up the Roosters. Iroh, a few marginal passes as then Clark on the end of it, wrapped up 15 out from the line. Last tackle for the Roosters with Lamb. He kicks a crossfield. It's coming down here. Pressure on Rapati. He goes up and misses, as does Matt Singh, and it falls for the front row, would you believe, Andy Platt? Yeah, very good work from Andy Platt. In fact, it was good work from the Warriors. He got good body position, Rapati. See here, the ball is going to be not taken. It'll go back towards his players, as it does off Matt Singh. And there's two and three Auckland players in line to pick up the scraps. Jones away with that pass. Stepping back in field was to Tupu. Ten metres short of halfway. As Platt finds some open space through the centre. He sighted half a gap and just ran straight to it and made 15. Good run from Andy Platt. His involvement has been excellent in the early stages of this match. Kick turns Journey around and now trickles over the sideline. So the Warriors have got their game back in order after conceding that early try and they find themselves in front by two. A good sign for them is the involvement of Greg Alexander. Came up with three tackles in the last set of six for Sydney City. Most important one, of course, was on a flying Andrew Walker. But the fact that he wants to get the football in his hands augurs well for his side. And he's winning the scrum as Juni gets involved from the wing and for Lamb pass. 
to organise. Lamb, they're going to attack from inside their 20. Walker then on to Cleary. Cleary dummied to Jorgensen and the defence just hung with him. Blackmore made the tackle. Jorgensen out of dummy half. Can't get away from Hoppy. Be a good battle on the wings today. Kerwin against Juni. And Hoppy against Jorgensen. Out of that four players, 3x Rugby Union Internationals as that pass was thrown by Lowry and fielded by him. In the meantime, touched by a Warriors player, so the tackle count has restarted. Iro inside here for Singh. Singh darts in field, away from two, still going, Matt Singh. Nice swerve. And almost back up to halfway. And not getting off the man. Please from the Roosters players and greeted by referee Paul McBlain. He's a very good player, Matt Singh, defensively and uh, attacking-wise. He can break a line. He's got great determination. Keeps his legs going there to make an extra 10 metres. And there's struggles in the play of the ball. You can see Sean Garlic coming in. He's appealing to the referee, and they get the penalty. Now they're attacking. A giant line kick it was that sets them to this position. 15 out, and Hermanson, the try scorer with the first hit up. Garlic now. Brings Lamb into the action, now Fittler. Fittler, long pass on for Walker. Walker inside, ball comes Cleary. He crashes his way into the defence and cops some of his own. Rugged work from the back row of Kearney and Tartupu. As now Fittler holds that pass up. Here's Clark. 12 metres out from the Warriors line. And the Roosters chant goes up as Lamb with it. Up to the line he goes, throws the pass for Lowry and the... Warriors defence for a moment had a chance almost for an intercept. It was a floating pass. Kept going to the right now with Lamb. Lamb, he dummies, he goes all the way and set back in the end of the corner. Great stuff from the Roosters, number seven to score. Well, he's giving plenty to the selectors to think about. And it was a little man up against big man. Adrian Lamb up against Andy Platt. In those situations, generally, it's the little bloke who's going to win, especially with the speed of Adrian Lamb. Very quick off the mark. Play comes the short side. So we freeze play there. It's one on one. Andy Platt up against Lamb. He'll go through the gap. The sparing dive. You see the outside Auckland players staying with them and Tierra Party and the winger. And just one of those situations where too much speed. Yeah, it's almost like uh, Lamb picked out uh, Andy Platt, pinpointed him as maybe, I can't say slug now, can I? As a slow prop forward out there and just uh, ran straight around him and then put the noggin down and a great dive champion little player got a lot of skill that's a beautiful dummy too well timed dummy which committed the outside men and uh, you'd like to think he might be in the squad of 17 somewhere for the Queensland side well, it's as if he was running straight for a Queensland jumper in that corner he'll be there Ask me, I'm going to the coach. He'll be there. Cleary has this kick from a junction of the sideline and the 20 metre line and now fallen off the mound. A variety of kickers with their preference for the plastic tee or the sand mound. Cleary's one that opts for the sand mound. I thought he was a bit slow to react to the fullback Namu. He's normally a 5'8 or halfback, but he was defending behind his line. And uh, maybe he should have been just in front of that line covering Andy Platt. So Cleary with his kick, he's second of the day. The Roosters in front and he sprayed that well wide of the posts. We'll take a break at the 16 minute mark. The Roosters up by two. back underway with Gavin Hill and the Roosters from this kickoff Lowry this time gets a ironic cheer from the fans he's held on to this one and almost back to the 20 Garlic to the blind side and Lamb he just wants the ball all the time Adrian Lamb and he's made 10 running like a, a free running back rower that time Hermanson he makes another 10 and they're now 10 metres short of halfway the Roosters, they're making plenty of ground straight up the centre, this time with Fittler. 
Trying to wrestle his arms free from that two-man tackle. Back up to halfway. This is a good set of six to follow up their second try. Now Lowry running a little wider of the ruck that time. Wrapped up by Joe Vergana on in 15. Walker kicking on the last and he took some time getting the kick away and the pressure came from Vergana down the throat of Namu the kick. And up inside the 10, it was that hesitation with a kick that got his teammates offside. Yeah, that's ordinary play there from the Roosters. That was a set play. They knew that Walker was going to put the ball up high. No, he hesitated, but they just, look, they're, what, a, a metre or three inside where they should have been. And that's just a waste of a, a kick. And the free kick, the Warriors get inside Roosters' territory on the sideline, Steve Roach. Yeah, the Warriors are good when they got the football, but they're far too slow to adjust in defence. It's part of Eastern Suburbs' tactics to start from restarts as quick as possible. Now to the left side with Namu. He cuts out a man with his pass that finds Tia Rapati. Back for Namu. Now there's a chance on the right with Jones and then Kearney. But Kearney looked to his right and had 20 metres between him and a teammate. He throws it back inside. Alexander keeps it going now for Hill. Back inside it came for Jones. And Jones is trapped 28 metres out from the Roosters' line. So plenty of passing. Where's a dummy half? Now Alexander with it. For the Warriors on the 30. And Horro is wrapped up. Back on the ground now, 25 metres out from the Roosters' line. With Namu again. He steps. He throws a pass back in for Kearney. Kearney away from Hermanson. Only a half-hearted attempt from Terry Hermanson. Fifth tackle for the Auckland Warriors. 15 out from the Roosters' line. And Jones with Namu kicking back to the left side. Here comes Ivan Cleary. He times his jump to perfection. Ivan Cleary back to the 20. One of the best fullbacks under the high ball is Ivan Cleary. And here's this quick restart that Steve Roach was talking about. They do not adjust well, New Zealand. The New Auckland Warriors. Tremendous take. Got up high. Going to the football, Ivan Cleary. Made a difficult task look easy. And that's going to be the problem for the Warriors this afternoon. They don't get their defence set. This Roosters side with their set plays can well crack them open. There's Iro inside for Lamb. He's cut them open again. Adrian Lamb, he's got Walker in support. Walker now up to the 20. A teammate was taken out for Jorgensen. He dummies inside, 10 metres out from the Warriors line. They play an advantage for the Roosters, but Clark was taken out of the action. Has now done on the field, crashes up to within five metres of the line. Last tackle for the Roosters. Garlic with Walker. They're all offside the Warriors. Lamb, he kicks over the top. Fittler at home will score an easy one for the Roosters. And justice is done. They get the try. A play later when they thought they would have scored. Fittler scores for the Roosters. Oh, easy is the word, isn't it? It's the Auckland Warriors almost playing in slow motion. Reaction-wise, this is a great break. Made a nice inside ball. Lamb's got nothing in front of him. He found Walker, a good change of angle there from Walker, who then fouled Jorgensen. And from here, he always thought that if they didn't score now, it was going to come one or two tackles later. And when Walker and Lamb got together, Lamb, he's having an absolute blinder early in this game. Just a little one. He didn't go for the winger. He saw there was no one at home and Fittler very easy. Warriors just don't do the simple things well at all. If there's an angle play against them, they don't seem to read it. Have players sucked in when they aren't needed. And this is the last tackle. Like, somebody has got to be aware that a kick is an option. And the, the main reaction was from that man there, Brad Fittler, and his teammates. At the time, the Warriors think that somebody else is going to do the work. Cleary has this kick. His third one for the day. He'd be unhappy with his first two attempts. I know the previous kick was from wide out, but he didn't strike it at all well. This one is better, though, for the Roosters. One out of three for Cleary. And it's 14-6, the Roosters over the Warriors. And Adrian Lamb with a kick again. They knew it was on, and Fittler, he won't get too many easier than that in all of 96. Steve Roach on the sideline. Yeah, that was better play than everyone thinks, too. Adrian Lamb's little chip through. Gene Namu caught up in the defensive line. No full back at home. Easy for Fittler. Well, that's the thing, Block. If he is caught up in the defensive line, somebody else has got to realise that that's the case and come across from the other side of the field and do the sweeping. So here's Tim Madison on for the Roosters with his first touch of the ball. The Auckland defensive effort thus far, we'll have a look at the stats for attack and defence this year. It really belies their effort because that has been one area they've improved on their 95 stats. They've conceded 14 tries in six matches. I know we're up to round eight, but they had a forfeit in the first round. 
but 14 tries in six matches is still an improvement on last year as Garlic just cuts him up again straight through the middle, makes another 10. Well, it might hit 24 today. It's now done for Ira. A well, one-handed pass to Clark and driven towards that sideline by Blackmore. This is Fittler. Last tackle for the Roosters. Centerfield bomb. It skewed off the side of the boot. And good take too. So the Warriors can turn defence into attack. It was a great take from Alexander. Alexander complaining there that John Kerwin didn't position himself in the best possible way for him. That's Guttenbeel on. Another replacement. This man is Vagana. Very physical side and they love having the football, the Warriors, but unfortunately that's only half of the game. See, they're 35 out from the line now. Roosters enter the field as Alexander pushes it on. Namu and then Betts. Standing very wide today. Dennis Betts. Last tackle for the Warriors. The kick this time from Namu. He too tries the centre field bomb. Now who's going to go up? Jorgensen goes up and look at the play from Peter Jorgensen leaping high for that ball and came down almost uncontested. There's now Clark from dummy half. Again, you've got to impress the point of Juni, Cleary and Jorgensen. Here's Jorgensen with a take. They've been outstanding this year. Such a plus, the men in front, when they know that the blokes behind are doing their job. As here's Iroh to the left. Inside pass. Five inside, Warriors territory. It's away with Fittler. One off the ruck. Not looking to pass, they... Came in heavily to him, three defenders. Fifth tackle for the Sydney City Roosters. And Walker. This high kick coming down for Namu. And Namu has spilled it. Now where's the chase from the Roosters? Madison first there, and that man was offside, Sean Hoppy. But he had to get to it. Conceived the penalty, otherwise it would have been a four-pointer. Yeah, no choice for Hoppy, but to get on that way, on that ball, and concede two points instead of a possible six. Although the Roosters may be very tempted here to run the football. With three Roosters chasers lining up. Good kick. Andrew Walker's got a great kicking game. He kicks the ball high, kicks it long, gives his chasers every opportunity. The Roosters prepared to attack. Jorgensen it was with a first hit up. Now for Madison. And Madison, front on defence, jarring stuff from the Warriors. It was Gavin Hill. The Roosters with garlic to Iro. Bits almost for one moment, I thought, was going to fall off the tackle. Still five out from the line. The Roosters. On the boil at the moment with Fittler. And then fed on for Lamb, the danger man. They open up again. Lamb, he steps inside and gets his second. Well, Lamb is on song and the tune is so sweet for the Roosters. His second try and the Roosters have four. And again, it was Adrian Lamb up against a big man. I think you'll find it was Tatupu that he bamboozled. Going across field, they had enough troops there. This set up the attack. Really no idea there, G Namu, but it was a great kick, really difficult one to take and there's Madison leading the way Sean Hoppy had to come in and give away the penalty then good dummy half work here that's a good ball from Garlic across to Lamb now they drift across in defense as we freeze play there that player there is going across with Adrian Lamb it's Tony Tatupu now have a look at how he just misses him completely falls over and then Lamb, showing great strength, dives between two players. Yeah, Pete and Gavin Hill back on the inside, just a little bit too slow, but it's, uh, well, Lamb's just chopping them up today. He's just carving them. And he's, this is the best football he's played all season. He's had a great year so far. It just keeps getting better for him, growing in confidence every game. He's the New Guinea, Papua New Guinea captain, test captain. It was like a smash-up derby close to the line. There were Auckland Warriors players going left, right and centre. Four of them ended up on the deck and Lamb just dived over for the try. Cleary back from his favourite side, 10 in from touch. This is his fourth kick for the day and he's back on target now, Ivan Cleary. Two from four and the scoreline blowing out now for the Roosters. 20 points to six at the 26-minute mark. Watch the Auckland bodies here as they hit the deck. Yeah, just the players on the inside aren't getting there. Either reacting too late or not reacting at all. Interesting change with John Kerwin off for the Warriors. Eva Rapati on to the left wing. 
And back comes Tim Madison. He's leaving his mark since coming on Tim Madison. Coming to the Roosters via firstly the Knights and then the Mariners. As Paul Dunn, another one of the bench players, makes another five for the Roosters. Garlic away for Ira. He was sent from the field in the corresponding match last year as the Roosters went down by four to the Warriors at Ericsson Stadium. The same man, Tony Oro, is playing really superb football this year as Pitler tries to crash through, all taken by Alexander. But uh, he, he loves to run from the right side of the field to the left. It seems to be his favourite side, and he's offloading on that side, setting up supports well. Big hit there. Oh, and Gutenbill, I thought the defender came worse off out of it. He was thrown back as Madison threw his frame into it. And the kick again has found ground as Namu forced back inside that 10. He doesn't look to find his winger. Instead, he finds an upending tackle from Andrew Walker. Buoyed by his first representative appearance last Friday week for City. Watch this again, the tackle of Andrew Walker. Now, unfortunately, it's almost a penalty, that one. And that was a good tackle, but that arm in between the legs is a no-no. It's a good play of the ball here for Stacey Jones. Picks up 15 metres before Adrian Lamb closes the gap. Well, they led 6-4. They're now down by 20 points to 6. Trying to get things back in order, and that kick bouncing and almost back over the in-goal line is now Jorgensen from in-goal area, taken by Hoppy. I would say Greg Alexander would be very disappointed with the chase on that kick as well. He kicked the football, got down there. The rest of the chasing team were very slow to arrive, and it was an easy task for the winger to make it back in the field of play. The Roosters again running themselves out of trouble. It's now Iro down that right side, in for Singh. Now they're over the 30. Fittler. With a step off the left that time. Into the arms of Dennis Betts. Fifth tackle. One thing's for sure, they're certainly well endowed with kickers, the Sydney City Roosters. Walker it is with much of the kicking today, but you've got Fittler, you've got Lamb, you've got Cleary, and a, a guy by the name of John Simon on the bench, who was number one kicker with the Steelers. Steve Roach, a comment on Greg Alexander's performance thus far. Yeah, you couldn't blame Greg Alexander for the score line. I don't think I've ever seen him chase from marker as well and make as many tackles. It'll be interesting to see how many he's made. Well, there's a 15 metres inside their own half. This is Dennis Betts. He tried a little step and ran straight into Dunn and Madison. Now Darren Ramika warming up to come on for the Roosters. There's no let-up for the Warriors' defence when you've got players like Ramika coming on as Kearney finds some ground up the centre, crawling his way for five or six metres before he's trapped 40 metres out from the line. Last play, Alexander turns Jorgensen around. Jorgensen back for it, making sure he knows where the chases are, and Jorgensen back to the field of play. Very safe football from Peter Jorgensen. It's a game smart play to look back over the shoulder just to assess the situation. He didn't get a particularly good bounce at the end of it. There's the little look, ball going away, straight onto the ground. Make sure that he wasn't taken back in the in goal area. He's done tackle 10 metres out. A good value out of Paul Dunn this year, the Roosters. This time was Peter Clark after the 20. This is better defence from the Warriors. They've used up five, kept them in that 20. And Walker called upon to do one of his deepest kicks, and again he's found a gap between Rapati and Namu, and Rapati with a fumbling effort. Not knocked on, knocked back towards his own goal line as Walker makes another good tackle, the kicker of the football. Namu away for Gutenbill. Spins away from Garlic. Good Owen Gutenbill, that match against Manly the last time we saw the Warriors. Of course, a former Manly player. Played in the President's Cup Grand Final last year. The Warriors all. There's a forward pass straight out of Dummy Half and picked up by the referee. I don't think he needed any tip from his touch judges. It was forward and maybe even lucky not to incur a penalty. Well, one thing about this game, you've got to get the basics right. And that's just uh, foolish football from the Warriors. Have a look, Auckland. They love getting the lock forward involved in scrum moves. On this occasion, Fittler did stay in the scrum. That's Ivan Cleary at 
5-8. The set plays are very good for the Roosters. You see they attack at every opportunity, but they do work for set plays, but that doesn't affect the other tackles in the set of six. Ramika on the previous play, now Madison. Ramika, a Kiwi by birth. Perhaps playing for a test spot this year, somewhere in the test squad, even though he's off the bench for the Roosters. As Fittler on for Walker. Walker now for Clark. The defence read it well that time. Alexander, man on man, made the tackle. Now Fittler. 28 metres out from the line, Rickardson rebounds away from a couple of defenders. One of them was Andy Platt, who ended up on his backside. Last tackle for the Roosters with Lamb. He kicks a crossfield, not quite the bomb he was hoping for. It's coming down, it's a lottery, and straight through to take it this time was Namu. So he covered up that kick all right. It was better from Gene Namu at the back. I say again, I don't think the kick was the precise one that Adrian Lamb was hoping for. As this is Hill back just short of the 40 metre line. Warriors into the field. Now Kearney with a step. Nothing doing down that blind side. There's a few walking in this Warriors lineup. And he's the other player that I think is doing everything he can in this Warriors performance. Stephen Kearney. Steve Rage pointed out the work of Greg Alexander, who really has played very well. But Kearney also trying to rally his troops pressure on the Roosters defence and doing plenty of work in that department himself. That pass going astray, one of the rare times that play breaks down for the Roosters attack. The Roosters 35 out from their own line. As Clark comes infield and Gutenbill makes the tackle. This time Lowry threw a short pass that bounced off Hermanson. Double knock on, first against the Roosters. Hermanson was certainly firing onto the football. The pinball machine effect as it came off the two players, Betts and Hermanson. And the Warriors looking to work play to the left. They were standing wide, these two players. Here the first is Rapati. And now Ivor Rapati has missed the pass. And up the scrum base play came out very messy as Namu was forced back to halfway by Singh. This is Gutenberg. Oh, runs into a shoulder from Hermanson. He just came out of the action and back into it. Now away with Platt. Five metres inside Roosters territory as Alexander up to the line. Beautifully tied pass for Betts. Cut down by Fittler just outside the 20. Here for a party for Namu. And Alexander now, wanted a man inside and goes outside with Kearney who fumbles. Turnover for Ivan Cleary, promising raid breaks down. Yeah, that's a shame because uh, two tackles ago, Alexander threw one of the best passes I've ever seen. A beautiful short pass to put Betts through. And here he is again drifting across the field looking for supports. He finds a man with a good ball but drops his. Yeah, just gave Stephen Kearney the wrap. He put the ball down, and Alexander did well with the fact his footwork actually allowed Kearney to get outside his man, Andrew Walker, so there was an opportunity. That's been nullified now as Lowry flicks one out the back. Matt Singh cleans up nicely. Darren Juni confronted by four and five, so hits back centre field. It's a bit risky to pass from Lowry, but it's turned out all right. As Ramika tries to slip one around the back, well, if I said the previous pass was risky, that certainly was. And the Warriors with a 25 out and a full set of six to work with. There's Jones from dummy half. And Rickardson makes the tackle. Again, near the top of the tackle count for the Roosters. Getting through plenty of work as Betts. Got away from Hermanson. 15 out from the Roosters line. They really do need to score inside the final four of the first half. And now they've coughed it up again. It came forward off Blackmore. So two chances they've had in the last couple of minutes, and they've squandered both. And it came through a very nice tackle, a good hard tackle, driving tackle by Peter Clark, who's also played well in this first half. Copybook stuff, that one, hitting around the hips and sliding down. Eight handling errors in the match. Five to the Warriors, three to the Roosters. The most important stat, though, is that on the scoreboard. 20 points to six. After the Warriors had led 6-4. Massive tries to Adrian Lamb has the Roosters, I won't say quite in control, but 
certainly in a commanding position. And again, they're running themselves out of trouble. They've done that well today. As Fittler away to Singh, and Singh almost had a pass away. Rapati hanging on in the tackle. It's Tia Rapati, the centre. Cleary is easing the workload for the forwards. Now Lamb. Dummy left and right. The Roosters working away to the 40. When will this tackle end? Some heavy stuff from Lowry as Lamb again with that jink and then straightens up the attack. They fire through with uh, Rickardson. It was and then the kick. The chases are there. It bounces away from Singh. Taken on the toe by Iroh. Three on one. And somehow Tia Rapati has saved the day. Increase his pace. Superb effort. Yeah, fantastic effort from Tia Rapati. But what a brilliant ball from Adrian Lamb to set up Luke Rickardson. A lot of chases. Matt Singh didn't get the bounce. Neither really did Tony Iroh. Tia Rapati. Well, he had no right to get that one. Oh, what about that pass from Lamb, though? You know, fantastic. And give some credit to... Rickardson, it's good second phase play by him. He just hung back and waited for the opportunity. So they'll get one last set of six, the Roosters, to try and maybe even put this out of Auckland's reach this game. Lowry it is who charges back from that line dropout and Gutenbill, the first player in to make the tackle. They're 30 metres out from the line. We're uh, 60 seconds away from the halftime siren. And the Roosters in search of try number five as Iro, Walker and Fittler. Straight and hard, back for Walker. Walker just tackled by Platt, 15 out from the line. The Roosters with garlic, there's numbers here on the left. Fittler, plenty of dummies, inside ball for Iroh. Slips the pass out the back, it goes to ground, and Namu cleans up for the Warriors. Oh, well, he's only human, Adrian Lamb. He's had such a great first half, he, he couldn't pick that one up down around his boot laces. And so that should be the halftime score, 20 points to six. In a very impressive first half effort by the Roosters, Fittler drifting across the field. Iroh makes the half bust, and he just couldn't grab it. He's having the sort of day where you expected him to take a pass like that one. He had no right to take well, it. Well, he could have taken it, chipped over the top and regathered. As Gutenbill again bounced away from a chest on tackle from Hermanson. Geez, a goer. Um, Gutenbill. As Namu now kicks through. Jorgensen again has the kick covered. I don't think the chasers were in on the outside men were in on the kick from Namu. Halftime siren has sounded. End of the first 40 and the Roosters playing like competition leaders. Four tries to one. They lead the Warriors by 20 points to six. The Roosters come back out for the second half. Garlic leads them out. Just a slow walk back. So we saw some good tries in that first half. Adrian Lamb in particular. His two efforts. His first try was a beauty. And his second try, he wasn't far behind. Just as good. This was the try that he left, well, as I said, th at the time, three or four defenders on the flat of their back. I think he's probably still a little bit underestimated with the ball in his hands. Got a good passing game, of course, but he, he has got good speed, and I think a lot of people realise that, and he probably doesn't get the raps in that department. Back come the Warriors. Mark Carter comes out for the second half. So we'll hear shortly from Stephen Roach to find out what John Money had to say to his charges. So we're ready for the second half for new referee Phil Houston. A hamstring injury it is to Paul McBlain. And that's a rare occurrence that a referee doesn't see out of match. And Gene Namu gets us back underway. The Warriors from left to right for this second half. And the Roosters with Jason Lowry. Back he comes and almost to that 20 metre line. And it's Adrian Lamb. He's running with one defender is back turned and Lamb helps himself to 15 metres, so it's only an early sign, but not a good one for the Warriors. Is now Iroh, he was taken high there by Betts, not around the head, but he tried to get him around the chest and missed. As Lowry gets it up to halfway, or just short of the mark, as you can see. 
And the Roosters straight back on the case to start the second half now with Fittler. He doesn't mind a charge straight at the defence either. Fifth tackle with Walker. No pressure on the kicker of the football, but there is pressure on Namu. And Namu able to take it and then loses the ball. Fielded by Hoppy, but not forward, says Houston. Oh, gee, Namu. Well, look, yeah, you, you don't envy him his job, do you? Andrew Walker kicks the ball higher than anyone else in the game today. And they're wobbly kicks too. They don't just come down nicely for them. And he did get to that one, though, and then lack of concentration, it's gone. And wobbly kicks. Well, you know, they wobble rather than spiral or go in on in. They wobble. As is Jorgensen in from the left wing. Could he be called the wobbler? Walker the wobbler. As the Roosters, they go to the left with Lamb. And Lamb, or rather Walker, he switches inside for Lowry. And on the 20, able to stand in the tackle for Garlic. And Garlic with his head down and tackled. I'll get back to the kicker of the football too. There was no pressure on him. No chase came up for Walker on that previous kick. As now Iro. 10 metres out from the Warriors line. They've moved to the right side of the ruck. Lamb comes back to the left. Now Garlic inside ball, Hermanson. He wants a second try. He's lost it. And a knock-on ruled against the Roosters. This is a chance to go down to the sideline. What do the coaches have to say at halftime, Steve? Yeah, well, Eastern Suburbs obviously pretty happy with their first half performance. Uh, feel good. Like to see them clean up their defence on the inside a little bit. That's the only problem area. They must go to Auckland. Don't let them get wound up. So their chasing game has to be a little bit better. There's plenty of yards from dummy half, as, you, as you've already said in the first half. Adrian Lamb having a blinder. Lift intensity, even though you're, you are 20 points to six ahead for Auckland. Uh, their coach expects a lot more effort. So they're ordinary in defence in the middle of the ruck, far too lazy in that uh, area. Don't ball watch Lamb, don't stand there and watch him, and regroup better after kicks. Don't ball watch Lamb, that is certainly a key note for the Auckland defence. Some ground in this set of six. Oh, almost dropping the ball there was Vagana. And then he has lost it in the end under some heavy attention from a couple of defenders. Iroh came over the top, and the Roosters straight away on the attack with Lamb. Were they watching? Platt made the tackle. They're 32 metres out from the Warriors line. This is Hermanson. Oh, he bumps away again from Vagana. And Garlic, penalty there against the tacklers. And this is right in front, 28 out. With a kicker like Cleary, I think you take the two. We've been going three and a half minutes, or almost three and a half minutes in this second half. And straight away, there's plenty of yards to be taken by this Roosters lineup. I would have thought that John Maney really would have put a rocket up his side and they'd have come out breathing fire. That's not the case. Joe Vagana did well to, to take it in the initial instance and then in trying to get through the tackles it popped out. And just this run from Adrian Lambert dummy, from dummy half just shows how many yards there were to be taken. Cleary takes plenty of time with his kicks. He's got two from four this afternoon. 22 points to six will give him that 16-point lead. And another try, and I think it's good night, Auckland. So Cleary from 29 metres out. Right in front of the posts. To take it to 22 points to six, he drives it between the uprights. So another two to the Roosters tally. Take a break at 22 points to six. Quick kickoff from the Auckland Warriors has caught the Roosters napping and we'll have a line dropout. So urgency shown from the Auckland Warriors. Well, that's the best thing they've done all day so far is the quick kickoff. They caught uh, the Roosters unaware. And uh, they'll get the ball back from this line dropout. This rule was introduced a few years ago. So from the kickoff, Auckland needing more of that. Well, they don't want too many kickoffs for the rest of the day. The rest of the day, they will be out of the match, but kicking the ball dead. The line dropout is with Walker. And that one from Walker, not his biggest line dropout. Back to the 40, and up comes the 14. That is Carter. He got away from one. Chance to see Mark Carter with the ball in his hands. 25 out from the line as now Platt. The Warriors needing to lift right now as Alexander. He dummied the bets. Inside came Rapati. 
No hand on Rapati, so he keeps on going and then offloads for Horro. Five metres out from the Roosters' line. The Roosters shaken up for just a moment as Alexander for Namu. Now away for Kearney. And Kearney taken in a try saver from Fittler. Not the strongest of grips he had on him as Namu feeds it on. This is better from the Warriors now for Betts. Betts unloads and Alexander puts it down. And the Roosters knock on in turn, but the first one is with Alexander. Well, he normally has great hands, Greg Alexander, and that was a real try scoring chance there. Good work from Dennis Betts to get the ball away. Let's see what kind of pass it was. One that you would expect Greg Alexander to take, and I think it would have been a try on the outside for your support winger. Sydney Roosters with Juni. 15 out from their own line. This is Matt Singh. I mean, that's just a simple hit up, but it's good play. It's 10 metres made on the second play for the Roosters. And now Clark and now gets set for the forwards to enter the action. It's Garlic from dummy half. They open right up, and Garlic finds surprising pace up to halfway. He went into a gallop, Sean Garlic. Lamb to the left with Iro. Iro one handed for Fittler. Fittler then for Walker. And Walker had to hurdle Fittler as he took the pass. 35 out from the Warriors line on the last play with Cleary. He kicks and again poses the question to Namu, who doesn't get to it. It's a tackle count has restarted for the Roosters. I don't think Clark knew that when he put a kick in. And the Roosters have it with Cleary. 20 out from the Warriors line. Walker then for Hermanson. Hermanson straight into the Warriors' defence. The tackle came from Platt. The crowd is lifting, and the Warriors right on the ropes as Lowry five out. He can't offload. They're standing very deep to the right, a la Manley from last night at Cogra. It comes away for Lamb. He throws a cutout ball for Iro inside for Singh. And now for Lamb, back it comes to the left with Walker. Walker motors ahead and tackled six out from the Warriors line. Still got problems this side. Garlic from dummy half. He burrows over, can't force it. He ended up on his back, we'll have a scrum. Well, Stephen Carney is blowing up and has been ever since the kick went up and another set of six was signalled for the Roosters. Sean Garlick gets over the line. He put them in good field position by just making bust up the middle from the dummy half position with ridiculous ease. And there's Adrian Lamb coming over the top, trying to help his skipper get the ball down, but to no avail. Where the confusion had arisen that was from the fact that Houston had already ruled six to go when Clark put the kick in and the Roosters players want to restart at the tackle count again after the kick as Fittler is wrapped up nine out from the Warriors line Clark he goes himself from dummy half and the defense able to hold firm that time Garlic now for Hermanson tries to get those legs pumping five out from the line Lamb is in position on the right side of the ruck. They cut out a man, they throw it too wide for Lowry, and Lowry has lost it in the pass. Well, he was trying to offload it, just that he'd lost his compass. And out of that, they have to play the forward pass. There was no advantage there for the Warriors. That's the second time in a couple of minutes Jason Lowry's tried to uh, offload in traffic, or he and Hermitson actually, and they both let one go, and they've lost the advantage that they've had a couple of times here, the Roosters. Well, i tell you what, looking at the replay, you could have a judge and say that the Warriors were the players who forced it back. Out of the hands of Larry, there was no doubt he was looking to pass. And here's a scrum penalty. Well, when was the last time that happened in an Optus Cup first grade match? Has it happened in the history of the Optus Cup? I think that was for uh, feed up, wasn't it, in the scrum from the hooker. 1975, the last one that was given for that. <laughs> Well, Houston gets his chance in the limelight in the second half out of the lower grades. And, and now... Two balls in the field. Time off for the two balls. Sweet. Of course, Phil Houston is the, the Kiwi referee now refereeing in the Optus Cup, uh, who Bob Fulton gave a massive serve to, I think, last year. And we thought we'd never see him again, but uh, he's back. I don't know why I'm glad he's here. I don't know who would have refereed the match. Maybe Blocker on the sideline would have donned the... 
the teal blue shirts. Yeah, it would have been the three metre rule if I'd have ref. <laughs> Blackmore down the right side. It sort of been anything goes, actually. Just do your best. As here's Betts. Away for Platt. And have a penalty, sir. Sweet. They're five metres inside the Roosters' half. This is Alexander inside for Carter. Carter not really hitting the line at any pace, but then was able to offload, and now Namu. Wrapped up 30 metres out by Lamb. Last tackle for the Warriors. They still need to get points on the board here as Alexander kicks, trying to place it, but the Roosters at the back with Juni. It was a little too deep, the kick, and what's Juni go? He finds himself a passage back to the 20. Had no right to get back that far. And a weaving run from Darren Juni. Now Ira. Well, let's just see how much ground the Roosters can make in this set of six. Crucial stage in the game. This is where the Warriors really have to lift to try and get themselves back into the match. Dalek now finding Madison. Good charge again. That's three rucks. They're out to the 40 metre line. Still keeping the ball alive. And with Fittler it was. And now Cleary comes into the line. And Cleary trying to bring Jenny into the action. He dummies. He's still going Cleary. Tackled on the 40. He just couldn't position Juni for the pass. And now Walker, here goes the high one again, no surprises. Namu, what can he do this time? It's batted back, is it from Singh? He comes up with it, Matt Singh. Throws the pass anywhere and fielded by Mark Horro. Oh, gee, Namu is having a nightmare at the back. He just can't get close to the ball. Two out of three kicks. He's had some good takes, but more often than not. Where's his support? Ball? Have a look, there's both Adrian Lamb and Matt Singh, the closest players to him. No Auckland Warrior protection at all. And now as we come back to live football, a, a mistake made by the Warriors, which will see a rooster's feed. Sterlow, I think you made the point earlier. It's the simple things the Warriors don't do. That's just attention to detail, if you like. I just... Their mental game is, is very poor, and the reaction because of that is non-existent at times. Oh, Fitler standing at 5'8 for the scrum, and then Walker... Walker is sore, he couldn't get a pass away of any quality, but knocked back, says Houston, as Walker bounced on it. Or pounced on it even, as now Fittler 15 out. Inside ball for Ramika. And Ramika 10 out from the Warriors line. Again a chance to deliver that knockout blow with Madison. And the Roosters, threatening points. Fittler for Lamb, there is that chink again, and tackled that time by Tatupu. Still five out, still right in front of the Warriors' posts. There's Garlic to the left for Fittler. He fires the pass for Walker. In his face was Alexander to make the tackle. Last play here for the Roosters. Let's see if the little grubber comes from Fittler. It's off a Warriors' leg, but fielded by Kearney, who thought of passing. That would have been fateful. Well, the one shining light for the Auckland Warriors this afternoon has been Greg Alexander. That was a kick through at the end, under pressure from the Auckland Warriors halfback, but his tackle on Andrew Walker was a try saver And not the first time he's had to come up with the big play in defence. Warriors with Namu. And now Rapati. Andy. Jones, Alexander kicking on the fifth. Juni has a chase, but that kick finds 35 metres with a kick. Inside the Roosters 20, that's where the scrum will pack down. Alexander over the thousand mark in points. Crowd figure today, good one for a Saturday. And so it should be with the Roosters on top of the table. Just under 13 and a half thousand. Steve Roach enjoying the action from the sideline. Yeah, sensational game. Adrian Lamb's having a blinder as you've already mentioned, but John Simon stripped on the bench, hasn't had a run as, as yet. I wonder if Gus has remembered him. Good point, Steve, with John Simon. When he has started from the bench, then that's been all bar one game this year. He's normally seen action in first halves, around about the 25-minute mark. Yeah, but again, the good coaches, they assess the situation. They don't put players out there for the sake of doing so. Oh, good ball. Oh, Here's Clark. Away, Clark. They won't catch him, Peter Clark. He's got too much toe. The chase was coming from Tatupu. But Clark, we talk about try-scoring specialists. Here's another one. And the Roosters are going on with it at 26-6. Oh, Len, he is smoking today. What a beautiful pass that was as he put Peter Clark through. Just watch the artistry of the man as he 
he comes up and just draws a couple. The Auckland defence, they don't know what to do. Two of them go in, he holds it up, and then Clark, I guess that'll be his 10th uh, try or ninth try of the season. He's the leading Roosters try scorer. Looks like Shell and Pease, that one. He can get over the try line. Peter Clark, and he's done it just about every game this year. And now you can see why he is scoring so many, because the service from the inside players is so very good. Richie Blackmore still has got no idea where this man went. He was staying on the outside to see what Andrew Walker was doing. And the most dangerous player in the game of rugby league is a man with the football. It seems that the Warriors, they're trying to overread the situation, and, and when they do, there's open spaces. Peter Clark gets his ninth try, joins Steve Menzies. Talent there at the top of the try scorers list. Peter Clark, just 22 years of age. Linked with the Roosters from Manly. And now Cleary with three from five. This for four from six. He does it easily. And that's what the Roosters are doing at 28 to six. 57 minutes gone. Then with Gene Namu. Deep kickoff. Back comes Tim Madison for the Sydney City Roosters, now up by 22 points. So, those of you with footy tap and the Roosters 13 plus, you've got them right where you want it at the moment. Garlic turns it away for Ramika. It's it over the 30. The crowd goes up with a chant. They want more points. There's Madison. Five tries to one as it stands right now. And back for Wobbly Walker with this kick. That's more a spiralling kick. It's a big one. Namu will be forced to go back to his own in goal. And here comes the chase. You can count them. There's about seven in line. He says, you have a go, John Kerwin. And he's going nowhere. Pummeled in the tap. Yeah, nice pass. Good pressure football, wasn't it? To the winger, heard five people surrounding him. And here it was. Look at the Roosters' chases. John Kerwin bigger than Namu. He sort of says, well, give it a go. I'll just run the pass. Now for Tira Party. Now with Jones. Crossfield run. He links up that time with Kerwin. Last tackle for the Warriors. Almost back to halfway in this set of six. Namu with a kick. He's picked the gap between Jorgensen and Cleary. And it's bounced five or six times before Cleary. They want to come back at the Warriors line. And well, it's at the stage of the game where they've got to be producing, you know, more thoughtful kicks than that one. They're 22 behind, and simply driving the ball downfield isn't good enough. They've got to be looking for maybe the chip over the top or the grubber for the outside backs to try and get some tries on the board. Or Paul looking to run the football on the last tackle as much as possible. Luke Rickardson tackled 24 metres from his own line. And Adrian Lamb again, if he hadn't have tripped over, there's no markers. Here's a chance for Jorgensen, although Namu comes across, plucks one out of the air. Jorgensen was flying on the chase, but went straight to Namu. There is Namu. Well, that's a trip. No doubt about it. That is a trip on Adrian Lamb. Missed by the referee and by the touch judge, who is all of... Nine or ten metres away. There's now Alexander. Away there for Tartupu. Up to the 20. Now Alexander out of dummy half. Trying to ignite this Auckland Warriors attack as Vagana stood in the tackle for a long while. Got the pass back for Jones now with Rapati. It's ad-lib football from the Warriors. And the defence stands its ground and another offload finds Vagana, who's figured three times in the play. Last tackle for the Warriors, Alexander throws the pass for Carter. Carter stretches out, doesn't quite get there, does he? No. He certainly tried and failed. And the Roosters, they jealously guard their try line. That's why their against record this year is second to none. Fittler coming across. Clark does a great job to pull Carter back. And there you see Adrian Lamb. He still comes sliding in with the boot to try and stop. Let's see where Carter gets the ball down. Uh, just short of the line, good decision. 
Ooh. It was as much the boot of Adrian Lamb that prevented the try. I was going to say, what an effort from Peter Clark, the strength to hold up Carter, actually pull him back from the try line. And Clark has tackled. Short of halfway. Roosters up by 28 points to six. Turned into a golden year for the Sydney City Roosters. And the kicking of Andrew Walker has kept the Warriors hemmed and the chase from Walker as well as Dan Ditto. Well, I thought the Warriors might really put the game to the, the Roosters this afternoon. It hasn't been the case. So we eagerly await the Roosters matches against the likes of Brisbane, Manly, North Sydney. That's where we'll see what kind of year it will be, whether it will be a golden year for the Roosters. Jones with Alexander. Cuts out two of the pass and Gutenbeel stepping back in field and then able to offload and Jones and now a chance he fires the pass along. They're through with Tatupu. He sprints for the line. He doesn't quite get there. He didn't reach out, so that is the fifth tackle for the Warriors. But all but given him the try, he did the right thing. A penalty may come against the Roosters here. Knocked down in the tackle, he awards the penalty to the Warriors. They want a quick tap. Now they get it, no. As Jones ran over the ball. Now he takes the tap with Alexander. For Namu, they're stretched here on the right. Namu with a dummy, back comes the pass. Surely they'll score, not this time either. He rolls his way over the try line. He checks with the in-goal judge. What's he going to say? What is he saying? Houston will award the four-pointer. The Warriors get their second try a long time between bricks. And hotly disputed there by Brad Fittler. Looked like a great tackle by Fittler to save the try. I'm just wondering if Rapati's uh, elbow hit the ground if the ball was grounded. This is the run by Tatupu. He gets pulled down a smidge off the line. Thought about the double movement, thought he was over, but he wasn't. How close can you get? And it came on this tackle here. And let's watch Fittler as he comes over in cover defence. Nice work by Nama to keep the ball alive. There's a gap. Fittler comes. Does the arm carrying the ball hit the ground? No, I think it's fair enough. I think the other arm did. He just rolled over. This might be a better angle. Good work from Namu to get through or half through the gap and then get the ball away with two tacklers hanging on. He finds Tierra Party. Fittler did a great job. He was involved in that previous tackle. Well, there's, there's the elbow that you're talking about. No wonder they were disputing it. They certainly forced the ball in the end. We'll see what Namu can do with a kick from just adjacent to the posts. He gets it. So the Warriors claw their way back, but it's still 28 to 12, 63rd minute. Stadium. Walker gets play back underway with the kickoff. And the Warriors have made a dreadful error from the kickoff with Sean Hoppy. Can you believe it? Honestly. Well, Everyone's done this in their career at some stage. And this is Sean Hoppy's turn. Unfortunately for the Warriors, it was behind his own try line. So they'll pick up at least 50 metres from the kick, you would imagine. And if you're going to pick one Warriors player in their team that would not come up with that mistake, he would be the man. Uh, forget just, the 50 metres. Yeah, well, it, it's a, it'll end up around the 25 metre line, but just harping, harping back onto that try, Pete. From the angle we saw that last angle, looked like a dead set double movement. He made the second ever to get the ball down in, in rolling over. Exactly. It wasn't Fittler rolling Rapati, it was Rapati of his own volition getting over that try line, and Fittler had him well and truly held. There was no doubt about he forced the football. That's what happened previous to that. It is disputed. So the Roosters with it, 24 metres out from the line. They get a chance for revenge. Is now Walker, and there is a chance down the left side. Walker with a dummy. Almost fallen four. Horro had to cover up. Lamb, will he get a hat-trick of tries? He throws the pass for Ramika. He tries a step. Standing in the tackle. 
And it is the fifth for the Sydney City Roosters. Garlic back for Lamb. He places his kick. Here comes Juni on the chase. He gets there and doesn't force it. It was a diving attempt from Darren Juni. Just a, an ace late. Oh, that was very close to something special. Select kick. Beautifully placed. And what does Juni try? Does he try and catch it or dive on the football? No, it was, he never got to it. He was coming back with Gutenbeel. Reserve grade today was a, a tight match all the way through. The Roosters led at one point, ended up down by two, 24 to 22. The Warriors and the Roosters. The Roosters, Shane Werrett, claimed as the fastest man in rugby league, came up with a couple of tries in the space of 90 seconds. As this is Kearney on halfway. And a sloppy play, the ball there, and Jones is able to make plenty out of it. And away now for Hoppy. The kick is knocked down by Jorgensen. Now taken on the toe and picked up. Does he get it? No, he loses it right at the death. Spectacular effort from Peter Jorgensen. And it's a knock on against the Roosters left winger. I've got to say, that it's been a lot better effort by the Warriors. Uh, in the second half, they seem to have been a lot more committed. And they're starting to get a roll on with their possession percentage. And... Uh, the Roosters wouldn't want to fall asleep. They look like they've got the game wrapped up and they're, they're quite comfortable with their 16-point lead as the replacements start to happen. We've got Dunn, Oro and uh, Madison coming off. And Adrian Lamb gets a well-deserved rest as well. So John Simon's on there right now. Hoppy it is who's tackled. And now with Namu. Dummied inside, then picks up a party on the outside. Singh hangers on to make that tackle. 35 out from the line, Namu and Blackmore wrapped up. Steve, the, there's, there's a knock on against the Warriors, just on John Simon. There were, was no drama as far as getting a late entry into this match. No, I think uh, I think Phil Gould wanted to keep Adrian Lamb on as long as he could to impress the Queensland selectors. I'm sure he did that. It's just uh, bad luck that Queensland have got two great halfbacks to pick on from in uh, Alfie Langer and Adrian Lamb. I'll throw the cat among the pigeons. The cat among the pigeons. I'm of the belief that Adrian Lamb shouldn't be qualifying to play for Queensland. Now he's made the decision to captain his country, PNG. Well, we're opening up a whole new argument now. I guess then we bring up a player like Wayne Bartram. Well, we won't get into too much. <laughs> That's just my opinion on Sure, on, on yep. Lamb. Well, they were extraordinary circumstances in 1995. There's Ramika up five meters inside the Warriors half and now with Rickardson punching effort over the top came from Gutenbeel and it stung Rickardson that tackle with Fittler on the last and this time just fires it for the line and is content for a scrum to pack down 15 out from the Warriors line and Luke Rickardson in some trouble behind play now pretty strong tackle Sustained a leg injury from that. I think Phil Gould will leave him out there too long. You see there, Kearney going low and Guttenbeel coming in high. And the impact and the angle of the tackles has done the damage. And off goes Luke Rickardson, favouring his right leg. Tony Iro enters the fray once more. In the meantime, the Warriors win the scrum and up out of the line came Walker. Make a good ball and all tackle on Richie Blackmore as Namu then for a party and quick hands from the back line. And now a party, even a party, it is down the left side. Showing great pace, but even better pace from Matt Singh. He offloads the Warriors. Well, there was a knock on at the end of that and ruled by Houston. Firstly, a wrap for Ivor Aparty, but what about the chase and turn of Matt Singh? Yeah, well done, Ivor Aparty. He really put the foot down, got around the outside of the inside uh, defenders there from the Roosters. Junie caught him flat-footed. He dropped off the pace. Then it was left to Singh to come with a, a well-timed tackle. A bit of rah-rah there, releasing the football. He knew he was going into touch. And the knock-on. There you see the man who made the tackle was Peter Jorgensen. Now Darren Junie has been run around on that side. And Jorgensen, the other winger, has come up with the clean-up work on the inside. Hard playing it for the Roosters. There's Hermanson now. Five inside their own half, the Roosters. 
with Fittler. He was looking to link up with Matt Singh. He couldn't find him. All the Penrith teammates. Zyro. Now quick hands from Ramika. Lowry was caught, caught flat-footed. Back for Ramika, and he's going backwards in the play. A risky passing there. It's the fifth tackle here for the Roosters. Just inside Warriors' territory, and John Simon gets his first kick in, and it's, it's excellent. As good as we would have seen from anyone else in the Roosters' side, and here's a job for either a party at the back. And again, that chase and tackle is spot on. 28 to 12, 20 points to six it was at halftime. It's six second half, that would please the Warriors. And right now, appeal for a penalty there, they're going to get one. The hit up came from Vagana, and it was a bit of a wrestle to free themselves of the tackled player, Walker and Iroh. Just a twist of bodies there. Or was the man penalised? This is Andy Platt. Looks the shoulder down. He's lost it. And some desperation shown from the Roosters players to dive on the loose ball. It was well done from Jason Lowry. A real scramble to get to it. Now Ramika inside pass and upended. And Alexander was cleary. On the 40 metre line. Simon. Fitler cuts out a man with Singh. Inside it came for Journey. He gets away from one. Not past Gutenbill. He might find himself in the starting lineup next week. And one of the more impressive forwards for the Warriors. And Garlic with a dummy, and here's another 10 metres from dummy half. He runs up to Dennis Betts. The whole defence comes from your markers. If they're not doing their job, then it's, it's like a domino effect through the rest of the defensive line. And the Warriors have really been poor in that area. Mistake made here by the Roosters and throwing the football away. So 28 12 is the score. Seven minutes remaining. We'll take a break. And welcome back with this. Play now with Namu. Away here for Blackmore. And Blackmore on the outside. He's still going, Richie Blackmore. Up to the 30. Turns the fullback around. The cover is coming from everywhere. It was Jason Lowry who got to him. Now to Namu. That is incredible, Jason Lowry. He was back there to make a tackle. And the Warriors. They're on the boil. The Auckland side with Dennis Betts. 15 out from the Roosters line. Held up in front of the Roosters' posts. Now with Jones and Alexander. He runs up to the line, throws the pass and put down cold by Eva Rapone. Well, they can make breaks, the Auckland Warriors, but the scrambling defence of the Sydney City side has just been something else. When you take pride in, in your defence, you're going to have a successful season. Now that Tom Rodonikus at Western Suburbs actually had his players kiss the in-goal area. That's, that's how much they wanted to keep it their own. Good work here from Blackmore. He's waiting to find some support players, and that's tremendous work from the front row of Jason Lowry. How he got there, you'll never know. And unfortunately, at the end of this set of six, the pass to Eva Rapati went astray. And they have improved their efforts in the second half, the Warriors. Now from their own 20, Madison goes for a gallop wide. Got the Pistons pumping that time. Made it awkward for the defence to make the tackle. And here's this simple play that has worked so well. The back's coming in. Clark was able to make 10 metres out of dummy half. Simon, now for Iro. He's got Lowry on his outside. He decides to pass to Singh. They keep it alive with Garlic on the 40 metre line. And Garlic gets it now to within five metres up halfway. And a second tackle made around the ankles. Concedes the penalty. The Warriors. It was Alexander, the man infringing. Lamb about to come back into the action. A front runner for the Optus man of the match today, Adrian Lamb. He's replaced Sean Garlic, so he gets thrown into hooker. Well, Andrew Johns is going to be a likely choice for New South Wales hooker. If you have to find Adrian Lamb a spot. Number nine. 
Just a suggestion as Lowry stands in the tackle back for Lamb. Lamb tries to get on the outside of Gutenbill, not so that time. I'm sure Alfie Lang is having none of the hooking job. Simon across for Fittler. He dummies to Ira now picks off Cleary. Cleary able to offload it into the arms of Betts, is it? It is for the Warriors. Nine metres out from the line. Well, they're playing some attractive football, aren't they? The best thing that's happened to the Roosters the last couple of years is Phil Gould taking over his coach. Their former coach had them running from dummy half for four years. They did nothing. Look what they're doing now, throwing the ball around, and uh, they're really one of the teams to beat this year. Well, with this victory, they will go to 16 competition points. It's the perfect record. Kearney, the job getting him to ground. Last tackle here for the Warriors with Alexander. Namu, up to the line he goes, and then a dummy, and he's through, he stumbles, he's lost it, it's towed through there. Firstly by Clark, it'll be covered up by Simon. I've got to say, I thought Namu had thrown forward with a pass, so it's not going to be much advantage if the Roosters get trapped inside their ten, as what has happened. I thought it was thrown forward by Namu, and now they've made a mistake. Peter Jorgensen, I get back to the pass from Namu, I'm sure it was thrown forward, and then came off the boot of Clark. Well, with only a couple of minutes to go, it's not going to make any difference in this ball game. Greg Alexander hanging on there, let's see if there's any interference from Alexander. <laughs> he tried to get something in there, but Jorgensen, well, he accommodated anyway. The intent was there. He's had a great game, Greg Alexander. Look, I, I think in the beaten side, he's just tried his heart out. If they'd have had another 16 players along with him, playing with the same desire and intensity, they wouldn't be trailing by 16 points and had 28 scored against them. There's a chance on the blind side of the scrum as Blackmore stands them up and goes for the corner and gets a try, Richie Blackmore. Well, I've got to say, that was a little simple for the Auckland Warriors, a little too easy. I know it's late in the match, but... It's another try, and it's 28-16. And all of a sudden, that 13-plus that you were talking about has gone out the window. Yeah, sloppy stuff here, and that won't please Phil Gould. In fact, it's been an emphatic victory for the Warriors in the second half. Some good footwork, footwork there by Blackmore on Peter Clark. Yeah, nice try by Blackmore. He's had a good second half. But wasn't uh, much sided in the first half, but uh, he's a strong player. Got great... Upper body strength, running with the ball and two hands there. And uh, a slick mover. Good dummy. He's got it all. Ordinary tackle by Clark. Blackmore got well into the Ingol area before he forced it. He's had punters again concerned at the scoreline. It was a ten and a half start the Roosters were giving. Uh, this kick all important. The voodoo doll is out of Gene Namu right at the moment. And from 9 for 96. And this one, is it going to curl back? No. So just wide of the uprights, 28 to 16. And just 60 seconds remaining as we look at the try again. Blackmore, once he got round Clark, he just kept on going, Richie Blackmore. There's the try line there. And around he goes. He had to almost fend off the in-goal judge. He put on a little dipsy doodle to get out of the way. No rush to get back to halfway from the Roosters. They've wiped out 30 seconds on the walk back. Well, I'd imagine that uh, Coach John Modi might have been pretty happy with their second half recovery. They've actually uh, won the second half, 10 points to eight at this stage with a few seconds remaining. That's been, uh, you know, they're capable of doing this sort of stuff, but as Alexander oh. goes for a, uh, <laughs> well, you'd only call that a speculator. Well, he's on the chase. It's a little... Too late for a kicking duel. Here's Cleary on his own 20. And some open space for Ivan Cleary if he wants to run it. The siren will sound back for Juni. He's lost it. Well, it's anyone's. And covered up by Juni. So a sloppy end of the match. The Roosters finishing in the second half wasn't all that flash. But at the finish, it's 28-16. to 16. The Roosters win number eight for the season. 28-16. to 16. A crowd ecstatic with that.